الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد و علی آلہ و صحبہ و سلم اما بعد Some of the things we learn and should reflect upon is that every one of us will taste death. Every one of us has lost another day in his or her life, another second closer to the end. And all of us are faced with trials and tribulations. And nothing that we possess in this world will prevent us from dying, nor will we be able to take it with us, no matter how much wealth, no matter how much fame, no matter how much fortune, no matter how many uh, wives or properties we own, but none of that will benefit us in the life to come. And death comes when it is decreed and appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kullu nafsin da'ikatul mawt That every soul shall taste death. Meaning all the best of mankind will taste death and have tasted death. The prophets, alayhim afdal salatu wasalam, from Adam, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, David, Abraham, all of the prophets, alayhim afadhu salatu wasalam, may peace and blessings be upon all of them. If they have not tasted death, then they will taste death. Meaning, they've all died except Jesus, alayhi salatu wasalam, who rose to heaven and he will come back in the end of time, as this is one of the signs of the day's of judgment, the day of judgment, that he will come and then he will die. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Innaka mayyitun wa innuhum mayyitun, thumma innakum yawm al-qiyamati inda rabbikum takhtasimun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Zumr, the chapter Zumr, he says, Verily you will die, and verily they shall die. Then all of you on the day of judgment will come before your Lord and then you will argue or dispute about those things you differed over. So all of us will be judged. All of us will taste death. All of us will be held accountable for how we lived our life, whether we lived our life doing good deeds and positive and believing in Allah and believing in the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and following that which we are ordered to follow, or whether we chose another path. And what we can benefit from the recent loss of life of one of the people who are known for their fame and, and, and films and so forth, is that no matter how high or how much success people believe we have, that all of it will come to an end. And death can suddenly overtake us, even when we believe we're at our high point. Look at how many famous people have died recently, or how many people who are leaders of whole country that overnight uh, were overthrown and going from the highest status to being found in caves and then hung, the case of Saddam Hussein, or Michael Jackson, who was very famous, who from our generation was one of the most well-known pop stars, the king of pop, so to speak, who people raised to such a high status, and he had wealth, and he had all of these things in this life, but he did not necessarily have happiness, and then he perished. And how many people have the people thought had so much potential, but it was their time. It was their time to leave this earth and begin the journey to the hereafter. So as a reminder to myself, 
and a right, reminder to my brothers and sisters in Islam, and a reminder, in fact, to all of mankind, is to realize the importance of fulfilling our divine purpose, and that is to worship the one who created us all and the one who, to whom we all shall return. And this is why Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسِ لِلْيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created mankind and the jinn except for the purpose of worshipping me. This is from the one who created all the prophets. May peace and blessings be upon them all. And sent them as messengers in order to call their people and their various nations to the worship of God and God alone. And to avoid those things that are worshipped besides him, whether it be false deities, whether it be being excessive in loving this world and this worldly life, whether it be loving fame and fortune to the extent of worship, that you worship those things, or worshipping your desires, or worshipping animals, or worshipping the sun, or worshipping the moon and the stars, or worshipping the trees and the forest. And all these things which are created, none of them can benefit you. None of those things can postpone your death and your end. And I'll end with this verse of the Quran where Allah says, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولٍ إِنْ نِعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُوا تَعْقُودٍ And we have sent to every messenger, uh, we've sent to every nation a messenger to worship Allah alone. And avoid those things which are worshipped besides Him. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and forgive us of our many sins and bless us to die in a state of, of faith, Iman, and bless us with Al Nafir Muttaqabbilin, and bless us all to be a source of guidance for others and an example for others, for all of mankind, to worship Allah alone and not form partners with Him and to avoid worshipping the prophets even, or the angels. May peace and blessings be upon them all. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.